Peter saw a movement in the distance. He was aware that he had to be careful. Predators in the region had been reported. To check whether it was the bear he was looking for, Peter stepped closer. Then, he turned his focus elsewhere. The black bear was carrying a baby when he noticed it. Peter became anxious. This was something he had never seen before. He had to make sure the infant was okay. But there was a serious issue. To put it simply, the bear wouldn't give up the kid. Peter chose to get closer cautiously. Various thoughts and worries entered his mind. He couldn't understand what this child was doing around in the first place, let alone why the bear had a human child in its teeth. So far, the only thing he knew for sure was that this situation was unusual. The safety of the child was of the utmost importance. Not only could he not afford to waste any time, but he also needed to proceed with caution. The infant may be gravely harmed if the bear became angry. So Peter made the decision to take action. Peter sneaking up behind the animal, carefully approached it. It was his understanding that brown bears were far more dangerous than black bears. He had to play his cards wisely. Suddenly, the bear set the infant down on the ground below. Peter knew that if he acted quickly, he may be able to save the baby. Peter was well aware that a single misstep may have disastrous consequences. He made his way carefully to the spot where the baby had been set down, hoping to rescue it but the bear soon turned back around. As Peter inched closer and closer to the child on the ground, the bear whirled around. Peter continued further, at first guessing that the bear had not seen him. However, he then saw the bear's behavior shift. That was a bad idea. He hoped the bear would leave the child alone, but now he was confronted by a fully grown grizzly bear. Peter became aware of his heart thumping violently inside his chest. He had never felt this fear in his life. Peter and the bear exchanged menacing glances. He was a ranger, so he knew better than to make any rash decisions. Grizzlies are notoriously dangerous due to their aggressive and territorial natures. He had a freeze in place. If he makes a single mistake, it may be his last. Peter relied on his own knowledge about animals to keep himself as calm as possible. Vast store of information and experience to keep himself as calm as possible. In this case, not one but two people's lives were in jeopardy. He was completely unprepared for the bear's response. Instead of charging at Peter, the bear picked the child back up. It seemed like the bear was afraid of Peter taking the child away. What happened next caught Peter off guard. The bear then ran in the opposite direction with the baby. Peter attempted to follow its course, but it was moving much too quickly for him to keep up. Now he had to swiftly alert his fellow rangers so that they could organize a rescue operation to get the child to safety. They needed to get the child immediately. However, there was a catch. Peter's fellow rangers didn't even believe that Peter was telling the truth about the situation. Peter really needed help, but the story was so outlandish and impossible that it was difficult to justify sending anyone to help him. Peter was forced to seek assistance by other means. He was certain that he'd seen the bear holding a little child. Still, nobody came to help. It was at that point that Peter made up his mind to take things into his own hands. The situation forced him to dial 911. Peter contacted the authorities. All of the other rangers encouraged him to just forget about what he saw. Peter's co-workers all assumed that he was losing his mind. It's understandable that they would think so. After all, who has ever heard of a grizzly bear carrying around a human baby? Peter, however, ignored his co-workers. He had already informed law enforcement. This time, someone would come to help him. They sent every police officer in the vicinity immediately. Minutes later, the first police officers came. Since a kid was involved, they took Peter's call seriously. They even expected more reinforcements to come shortly. Then Peter's boss welcomed the cops into his office. Peter's boss spent an hour in his office talking to the officers. From the outside, it seemed to be a very serious conversation, and Peter found himself wondering what on earth they could be discussing. They exited the building and immediately began walking further into the woods, completely ignoring Peter the whole time. Quickly, more cops showed up. They cautioned Peter to remain at his current location. They seemed to be in a bad mood. Nothing was making sense to Peter. What did his boss say to these cops, he wondered? And why did they seem so eager to go into the woods? Something was bothering Peter. 
he decided it was time to talk to the boss. When Peter tried to talk to him, he urged him to sit down and wait. He told Peter that he would be questioned about the situation very soon. Peter didn't understand. Within a few minutes, the police officers returned. Surprise flooded Peter's face. They couldn't possibly have looked through the whole woodland in a matter of minutes. They also couldn't outsmart the bear like he could since they weren't rangers. Peter had a lot of questions about what just happened. It's clear that something else was going on. When the cops entered the office, Peter would finally find out what exactly what they had uncovered. Peter was interrogated about the rumored bear sighting. They also had plenty of questions about the child it was supposedly carrying. It was clear to Peter what he had seen, but no one appeared to believe him. But he couldn't say he entirely blamed them. They had to find out what was really going on and quickly. The police officers assured Peter that they would be leaving shortly and that they did not find the situation to be funny. Peter was shocked. Was anyone going to take him seriously? He knew what he had seen. Peter was not allowed to leave until he had spoken with his supervisor. He was under so much pressure that he broke down in tears. There was a child in need, and nobody was volunteering to go find them. Peter cried uncontrollably. He insisted that his boss send him and his co-workers to find the child. But there was something that Peter didn't know that would shock him even more. His boss decided to put Peter on indefinite leave. His employer informed him that he could no longer do his ranger duties. Peter was correct to think that no one believed him about the story. Even though he saw what he saw, no one took him seriously. But he still knew that what he saw that day was completely real. Peter's supervisors and co-workers thought something terrible was happening to him. Maybe he had a painful experience which led to him seeing things that weren't really there. After that, they pressured Peter to see a therapist. It turns out that Peter's wife and baby both passed away in the midst of a very difficult delivery a few months ago and he never got over the loss. His co-workers thought he came up with a situation to deal with his trauma. That's why nobody took him seriously. They assumed he was still processing his tragedy and had made up seeing a bear holding his infant son. Peter argued otherwise, insisting that what he had seen was really genuine. Then, an idea struck him. His could deal with this on his own. Peter's goal was to find out the truth of the matter, and he was determined to do it. Since he told everyone what happened, he had been banned from entering the forest in that area. But he didn't care. He was worried only about the safety of that child. His co-workers did their best to stop him, but they realized it was pointless. Anything that happened to Peter wouldn't be the responsibility of the ranger station. Still, Peter decided to visit the woods. Peter planned on entering the woodland while it was still light out in the morning in the hopes of seeing the bear. Since no one would be guarding the forest border at that hour, he felt he could enter without incident. Drawing on his extensive experience as a ranger, he calculated the optimal next steps. Peter packed enough food and water for a week's worth of time, as well as detailed maps. He just needed one more thing before he could start his mission. He approached Jacob, his fellow ranger who he considered to be his closest buddy. When he saw Peter, he was taken aback since he had heard that Peter had been fired. What happened was no secret to him. Peter filled him in on everything he knew to be true. Peter finished his story by saying they needed to go to the woods to find the child. Jacob didn't believe a word of it since the story seemed too outlandish. He had no interest in going on a wild goose chase. After that, Peter started crying. Seeing Peter like this was something Jacob had never experienced before. He wasn't thrilled about following Peter's lead, but he saw no other way out. In order to protect his friend, he had to keep a close eye on him. He thought that if he abandoned Peter, he might injure himself in the woods. It was then that Jacob decided that he would accompany Peter. Still, Jacob had no clue how disastrous this journey would turn out to be. On the drive to the woods, Peter couldn't stop talking about the child and the bear. Jacob was certain that Peter had lost all sense of reality. In reality, Peter was only releasing some pent-up emotions. Jacob was worried for his friend and went to offer his help, but for Peter's sake, he remained calm. After getting to where Peter had seen the bear, Jacob immediately saw something. Jacob saw some footprints out in distance. The discovery quickly piqued his interest. There were rumors about bears in the region, but this was his first sighting. And there was no doubt about it, these footprints were a lot bigger than usual. 
tracks of a black bear were among those discovered. It dawned on Jacob that maybe Peter had seen a bear, but he still had his doubts about the baby. Now that Jacob and Peter agreed that there were bears in the area, they'd also agreed to be extremely careful. It was clear that this would be a challenging task. If the story of the infant and the bear was true, Jacob thought they would have to act quickly and confidently. A black bear is no laughing matter, and if it really did have a human baby with it, who knows what else it was capable of doing. When Jacob uncovered additional footprints, he yelled to Peter that he had found more. They had made some headway in tracking down this bear. Jacob followed the bear's trail until he became disoriented. Exactly where the bear may have gone was a mystery to him. Just as quickly as the bear left its footprints, it vanished into thin air. Jacob had found the tracks, but now he had no idea how to get back to where he started. Then he had a realization. He had no idea where he was. But Peter continued to look around, more frantically as he had been before. A loud roar came from out of nowhere, a distinct roaring noise that was low and rumbly. Jacob stopped in his tracks. The bear was probably close. They were now undoubtedly in the bear's area, Peter realized. The bear had likely detected the human scent. They needed to watch their steps very carefully. What they do in the next few seconds will be the deciding factor in whether or not they survive. They were both well aware of just how bad things were at that very moment. Peter headed in the direction of the sound, but Jacob reached out to stop him from going any further. Peter stared at Jacob dead in the eyes. He truly seemed afraid. The fear on his friend's face was uncharacteristic. Jacob really didn't want to approach the bear, and he strongly suggested that Peter call for backup. Peter thought for a moment and said no. Nobody was going to come to help them. He had already been mocked and dismissed by his co-workers. Everyone had failed him before, so he had no reason to put his faith in them again. Jacob felt fear spread through his body. He just wanted to turn around and go back home. From what he could tell, the bear was slowly making its way toward them. Judging by the sounds he heard in the distance, the beat of his heart jumped a little. He finally broke down and informed Peter that he was not going with him. He was just too scared that this could be the end of both of their lives. Peter, however, didn't have the same fear and had no intention of retreating. Peter persuaded Jacob to stick close to him after some deliberation. They would be less of a target together than they would be separately. If the bear saw them, it may think twice before attacking, Peter considered. When they saw the bear, they weren't prepared with any equipment and couldn't sedate it. It was against the law for civilians to hurt bears like this one in this area. They needed to distract the animal instead. Jacob reluctantly went along with Peter's plan. At this point, all he cared about was making sure his buddy didn't die because of his own idiocy. Peter was sure that they were almost there. The adrenaline was pumping strongly through his veins. He needed to rescue the infant from the bear's clutches. Now there was no turning back. They've already put in too much time and effort to make this rescue possible. Jacob had serious doubts about whether or not the child was real. But then Jacob saw something that made him gasp. In the distance, they could make out a cave. Upon closer inspection, they saw the bear's footprints leading up to it. It seemed like the track headed right into the cave, so the two of them went in to investigate. There was no mistaking that this was the bear's den. Is it possible that the bear and the infant are both in here? Peter made a move to stealthily approach the scene, but then he suddenly froze. Peter saw what seemed to be a bear in the distance. It seemed like he was wobbling all over the place. He knew in his heart that he was not going crazy. Jacob saw the same thing. He was more terrified than he had ever been before. He was well out of his element here, doing something completely out of the ordinary. They shouldn't have been in there at all. Every part of him wanted to turn back now. There was no sign of the infant. Jacob was still trying to urge Peter to call the ranger's office for help. This time would be different because Jacob would be able to vouch for Peter's claims, he told his friend. But Peter didn't budge. He had to prove his point and show everyone that he was right. But he knew in his heart that he still needed to find the child. Then he heard something that changed the course of the day. They were completely taken aback when they heard baby's cries coming from the direction of the cave. The bear responded by retreating inside its den. A few minutes later, he emerged from the cave. 
and the baby was no longer crying. The child was definitely within the cave, Peter realized. The bear then looked directly at Jacob. That bear finally noticed Jacob. The current situation was really stressful. Jacob was at a loss for words. Peter warned Jacob to hold his ground for the time being. However, Jacob was so frightened that he began to retreat. When Jacob tried to get away, the bear responded and began charging. The bear was heading straight at Jacob. Peter made an effort to divert the bear's attention, but the beast was solely focused on Jacob. There was nothing left for Jacob to do except to leave this area immediately. This could get very dangerous. When Jacob felt danger, he bolted as quickly as he could. He could now hear the approaching bear. Jacob fell to the ground, which was the worst possible thing he could do. But he sprang to his feet and climbed a tree in a hurry. The bear made an effort to pull Jacob down from the tree, but it seemed that he had made it to safety. Peter had been abandoned, but the way into the cave was completely clear now. He heard Jacob's screams in the distance, however, he knew it was more important at that moment to get the child. Jacob will be fine. He had the skills needed to outsmart the bear. So he cautiously begins making his way toward the cave when he hears Jacob scream that the bear is coming back. Time is of the essence, and Peter must enter the cave without delay. Without even thinking, he bolts towards the cave's mouth. Since he has not heard the bear nearby, he feels he still has a chance to rescue the child. Peter entered the cave but couldn't see a thing because of the darkness inside. To illuminate the area, Peter hastily pulled his phone from his pocket. But he didn't know where to look next. Then, out of nowhere, he heard a sound from inside the cave. He started walking towards it. Then he saw something that really shook him up. At last, he sees the child. Peter rushes at it immediately. The baby didn't seem to be hurt in any way. Peter finally felt a sense of relief and accomplishment. But then he remembered that he had to leave the cave immediately. There is no time to waste. Then some distant sounds had caught his attention. Peter had a sneaking suspicion that the bear would soon return. The man hastily switched off his light. Within the cave, he could hear the bear walking about. Peter believed the bear had realized the infant is no longer where it was. The child begins crying all of a sudden. Unfortunately, Peter's efforts to soothe the infant are too late. The bear has seen Peter, Peter realizes. He turns on his flashlight and looks the bear in the eye. The bear has finally cornered Peter. Peter still has the infant in his arms. The bear is proceeding slowly towards Peter. But then, Peter starts to hear other sounds. The bear seemed to doze off out of nowhere. Peter realized that it must have been shot with sedative darts. He soon became aware of several sounds emanating from his surroundings. More rangers began hurrying into the cave without seeing Peter. Just before they entered the woods, Jacob had called them. But they weren't done with their mission yet. The team still had no idea where the baby's parents were. The police have not received any reports of a missing infant. Helped by the police, the rangers rushed the infant to the closest hospital. Peter accepted an apology from his co-workers, but his focus remained on solving the mystery. Very soon, they will find out the truth. The baby was brought to the hospital for a checkup. A team of physicians rushed to examine the newborn as soon as they arrived. Peter insisted on keeping his eyes on the child constantly. Peter was allowed to remain in the presence of his infant child by the police. A DNA sample was also taken to positively identify the newborn. Numerous tests indicated that the infant was in good health. Peter made it a habit to monitor the lab's progress every hour. As far as he knew, they brought the bear in for an examination too. In the two four hours since he last slept, Peter had been waiting for news. The news, however, was not what he had hoped for. To Peter's relief, the bear was released back into the woods. What about the baby, though? No one seemed to be looking for their child in the area. Peter couldn't stop his concern for this child, even though it caused him many restless nights. The captain of the police department eventually summoned Peter to his office. They concluded that the bear had protected the infant. The infant was cared after and nourished properly. They had also uncovered yet another piece of information. Finally, they got their DNA test results back. Peter lost it emotionally after hearing the whole story from the police captain. He was sad to learn that the baby's parents had been discovered in the woods. Evidently, they were involved in a tragic car crash. 
The bear took the infant into the woods after the accident. They also had trouble tracking down any relatives to the couple. Peter was confused by what he heard, but he realized exactly what had to be done. In the end, he decided to adopt the kid and bring it up as his own. It was the happiest time of Peter's life. Feeling on top of the world, after regaining his ranger position, Peter smiled broadly. He soon found a new wife who welcomed the child into her life too. His kid followed in his footsteps and joined the ranger force as well. The events of this story are entirely fictional and are products of the author's imagination. Images included are meant for illustration purposes only. Any resemblance to actual events, places or persons, living or dead, are entirely coincidental.